Welcome to your very last math video for the school year. This one is on measures of data distribution. There's going to be a lot of talking and kind of explaining for this one. So get your title, you got your learning target, 6SP5, summarize and describe the distribution of data, and I can describe the shape of the data in line plots, histograms, and box plots. More vocabulary for you. So today our whole discussion is around the distribution of a data. Set. So the distribution of a data set is going to show you the arrangement of the data values. How close they are together, how far apart, what does the graph look like if you didn't have the graph drawn. It's basically you're going to try to describe it and someone should be able to draw what it looks like without having the graph in front of them. Is that right, mm -hmm. All right, symmetrical. We've talked about symmetrical a lot in geometry and in elementary school. Data is symmetric when the left side of the distribution or the graph looks like the right. And we're going to show you in a couple of examples of that today. A cluster is a bunch of data grouped together. So if you think about a cluster in a candy bar, it's usually a bunch of nuts in one chocolate piece. So a cluster is grouped together. Or a That's cluster a of example. kids in the hallway is a bunch of kids I was going to say with a cluster of people together. But a right. locker. A gap, like a gap in your front teeth, is a number that doesn't have a data value. So there's a missing hole in the middle of your graph. And a peak, like the mountain peak, is the highest part of the graph with the most frequently occurring value. In our case, it's the mode. Where does it, the graph go the tallest? Okay, make sure you have all of these definitions written down. You don't like my examples or these, what? <laughs> they were all right. These vocabulary terms are going to come up about a thousand times in the next couple of minutes. You really got to know what each one of these means. Our last one is something called skew. It's a distribution that is not symmetric. So Mrs. King talked about symmetric, meaning the left and right sides are both the same. Skewed means there's more data in one direction or another. It's kind of off balanced. So we've got these two examples down here. You might want to make sure that these are drawn into your notes as well. Something that is skewed left means there's not a whole lot of data on the left. Most of it's over on the right. So I like to think of it as it's, it's skewed away from the left-hand side, so there's more data over on the right. If something is skewed right, it means you're kind of missing some data on the right. Most of the data is over here on the left, so it's skewed away from the right-hand side of our graph. And now you want him to draw symmetrical data, right? Symmetric is going to be the nice little there you go. Mountain. bell curve. That would be our symmetric for this one. I probably should have drawn that up there. You should have. You That's should have thought great. of it. All right, we are going to talk, and Mr. McKenzie doesn't have to keep up with writing, and you are going to take notes, whether it's in bullet form or a list or complete sentences. It's completely it should be in sentences because that's the way it's going to be on your test. How you organize yourself. So we have an example of a line plot, and it shows the quiz scores of a social studies class. Describe the shape of the distribution. So we're going to use our vocabulary words that we just learned, and we are going to start with uh, the data ranges from 17 to 23, and we have no outliers in our line plot. So that would be one sentence to describe it. Then we start to pick up each of those vocabulary terms and see how it applies. So I notice there's a hole in the middle of the graph here. So we would describe that as saying there is a gap between 19 and 21. I'm going to go cluster. We have two clusters. We have a cluster from 17 to 19 and a cluster between 21 and 23. We need to make sure that there are enough X's to actually make a cluster. So if 17 and 18 only had one X, then we would not include that. But we have two clusters in this line plot from 17 to 19 and from 21 to 23. So notice each of those things that we've described, we've told where on the number line those things are falling. We're kind of giving the left and right hand edges of each of those things. Next one is a peak. That's our mode. That's the one that occurs the most. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's more. But we would say there is a peak at 23 points. And now we need to talk about symmetric. Um, symmetry. <laughs> so is it skewed left or is it skewed to the right? Could you draw? Sorry. I suppose I can draw it on here. So remember, skewed is always kind of the opposite of what the word is. If it's skewed left, it means there's not much on the left. And there's more of it over on the right-hand side. There you go. So since we have more data on the right, we would say this is skewed left. But we're not writing this down. You guys, It's your responsibility to write down each of these phrases as sentences to describe the data. All right. Next one. 
for our box plots, here's a very important kind of note to put in. You might want to jot this down. We cannot talk about gaps, peaks, or clusters when we're talking about a box plot. So none of these three are things that you can discuss, and here's why. In a box plot, we can't see all of the data values. We kind of know that one-fourth of the data fell between 9 and 11, one-fourth of the data fell between 11 and 15, but I have no idea which data points are in here. You can mention They could the all be at 11, or they could all be at 15, or they could be scattered. We don't know specific data points, so we can't talk about if there's a gap or a peak or a cluster of data. What we can talk about is mostly the shape and some of those measures of variation that we can find. So I'm going to start out by saying uh, the box plot ranges from 9 to 35. She likes to take the easy one. I do. There is an outlier. Remember the little star to show an outlier that doesn't fit with the data? So we could say there's an outlier at 35. The median is sitting at 15. Our first quartile is at 11, and our third quartile is at 17. You could also say our interquartile range. Remember the difference between the first and third quartile would be 6. I did do some math there, sorry. Okay, and then you could talk about the 25 percent so um, when he was talking about the quartiles you could definitely include that the 25 percent between is that 15 and 17 is definitely more close together than the bottom half of the data we could talk about skewed skewed to the right or skewed to the left so this one since there's not a whole lot of data over here and a whole lot to the left we could say that this is skewed right it's skewed away from the right hand side and then this is where it gets a little tougher Describing the size and the shape of each of those pieces. So Mrs. King was talking about this third section over here. It's very close together, so we know the data is very close to each other. This section here between the first quartile and the median is more spread out. So we know the data in that range is more spread out, whereas it's more grouped together in these smaller sections. So it's not saying how many pieces are in those sections. It's saying how close or spread out is the data in those particular sections. All right, I like this text message box plot because it is very symmetrical. If you notice, uh, our data ranges between 5 and 45, and it's evenly dispersed throughout the box plot. What do you think about that sentence? That's quite the sentence. So Mr. King is pointing out the two whiskers, so our upper and lower extremes are both evenly spaced. They're both about 5 in length. Our first and third quartiles, these middle two sections you'll notice that they're each exactly 15 text messages long so everything is nice and evenly divided for us the median is completely in the middle at 25 and there are no outliers in our graph so we could describe this as symmetric we can describe each of those specific data points you could tell us that the data in the lower quarter and the upper quarter or the lower 25 percent and the upper 25 percent is very close together whereas the data in the middle is going to be more spread out we know that by the size of the sections there. And I think that's about all we can yeah, describe. That's it. Box plots, there's not quite as much to work with in this one. All right, we're going to do one more for you, and then you're going to do one. We have a histogram left in our histogram. I'm going to steal the easy one first. Okay, he's going first with our. We have a histogram that ranges from zero calories to 400 calories. Okay. You'll notice more of the data is on the left-hand side versus the right, so we would say this is skewed right or skewed away from the right-hand side. We have a gap between 150 and 199 and 300 and 349, so there are two gaps in our, in our histogram. We would say there is a peak in the 50 to 99 range. That's our highest one. And we have a cluster between 0 and 149. Notice, Mrs. King didn't say there was another cluster over here. If there's only one of something there, that doesn't count as enough of a cluster. If there's just one person standing alone, they're not really going to be a cluster of anything. So unless there's a large group of them all grouped together, we can't call it a cluster. So we hit them all. We um, symmetry, peak. Yeah, I think we're good. Symmetry, peak, clusters, gaps. There's no outliers here. Because we don't know, you know, yes, there's something between 350 and 399, but we don't know what specific number is there. So we can't be specific about whether there's an outlier in this group or not. But you're just describing as many of those pieces as you can. 
Okay, you're left to do the number of television sets on your own using those vocabulary words that we did with the line plot. So you have clusters, gaps, peaks, symmetry, and outliers. You should have a good sentence for each one of those vocabulary terms to describe this last shape. Have a good one.